The region of Tamil Nadu or Tamilakam, in the southeast of modern India, shows evidence of having had continuous human habitation from 15,000 BCE to 10,000 BCE. Throughout its history, spanning the early Upper Paleolithic Age to modern times, this region has coexisted with various external cultures. The three ancient Tamil dynasties namely Shara, Chola, and Pandya were of ancient origins. Together they ruled over this land with a unique culture and language, contributing to the growth of some of the oldest extant literature in the world. They had extensive maritime trade contacts with the Roman Empire. These three dynasties were in constant struggle with each other vying for hegemony over the land. Invasion by the Calabrus during the 3rd century disturbed the traditional order of the land, displacing the three ruling kingdoms. These occupiers were overthrown by the resurgence of the Pandyas and the Pallavas, who restored the traditional kingdoms. The Cholas, who re-emerged from obscurity in the 9th century by defeating the Pallavas and the Pandyas, rose to become a great power and extended their empire over the entire southern peninsula. At its height the Chola Empire spanned almost 3,600,000 square kilometres straddling the Bay of Bengal. The Chola navy held sway over the Sri Vijaya Kingdom in Southeast Asia. Rapid changes in the political situation of the rest of India occurred due to incursions of Muslim armies from the northwest and the decline of the three ancient dynasties during the 14th century. The Tamil country became part of the Vijayanagara Empire. Under this empire, the Kannada speaking Nayak governors ruled before the European trading companies appeared during the 17th century, eventually assuming greater sway over the indigenous rulers of the land. The Madras Presidency, comprising most of southern India, was created in the 18th century and was ruled directly by the British. After the independence of India, after the Telugu and Malayalam parts of Madras state were separated from Tamilakam state in 1956, it was renamed as Tamil Nadu in 1969 by the state government. Prehistoric period Topic. Paleolithic For most of the lower Paleolithic stage, pre-modern humans lived close to river valleys with sparse forest cover or in grassland environments. The population density was very low and so far only two localities of this lower Paleolithic culture have been found in South India. Pre-modern humans in South India, belonging to the species of Homo erectus, lived in this primitive old stone age Paleolithic for quite a long time, using only crude implements such as hand axes and choppers and subsisting as hunter-gatherers. A discovery of a rare fossilized baby brain in Villapuram district by a team of archaeologists was reported in April 2003. It is estimated to be about 187,000 years to 200,000 years or older. The ancestor of modern humans Homo sapiens who appeared around 50,000 years ago was more developed and could make thinner flake tools and blade-like tools using a variety of stones. From about 10,000 years ago, humans made still smaller tools called microlithic tools. The material used by the early humans to make these tools were jasper, agate, flint, quartz, etc. In 1949, researchers found such microliths in Tirunelveli district. Archaeological evidence suggests that the microlithic period lasted between 6000-3000 BCE. Topic: <inaudible> Neolithic. In Tamil Nadu, the Neolithic period had its advent around 2500 BCE. Humans of the Neolithic period made their stone tools in finer shapes by grinding and polishing. A Neolithic axe head with ancient writing on it has been found in Tamil Nadu. The Neolithic humans lived mostly on small flat hills or on the foothills in small, more or less permanent settlements but for periodical migration for grazing purposes. They gave the dead proper burials within urns or pits. They were also starting to use copper for making certain tools or weapons. <laughs> Iron Age. During the Iron Age humans started using iron for making tools and weapons. The Iron Age culture in peninsular India is marked by megalithic burial sites, which are found in several hundreds of places. 
On the basis of both some excavations and the typology of the burial monuments, it has been suggested that there was a gradual spread of the Iron Age sites from the north to the south. Comparative excavations carried out in Adichanalar in Tirunelveli district and in northern India have provided evidence of a southward migration of the megalithic culture. The earliest clear evidence of the presence of the megalithic urn burials are those dating from around 1800 BCE, which have been discovered at various places in Tamil Nadu, notably at Adichanalar, 24 km from Tirunelveli, where archaeologists from the Archaeological Survey of India unearthed 157 urns, including 15 containing human human skulls, skeletons and bones, plus husks, grains of rice, charred rice and Neolithic Celts. One urn has writing inside, which, according to archaeologists from the Archaeological Survey of India, resembles early Tamil Brahmi script, confirming it of the Neolithic period 2,800 years ago. Adichanalar has been announced as an archaeological site for further excavation and studies. Mentions of the political situation of Tamil Nadu before the Common Era are found in Ashoka's edicts dated c. 3rd century BCE and, vaguely, in the Hathagumpha inscription dated c. 2nd century BCE. The earliest epigraphical evidence in the Tamil country are that of the Pandya king Kadungan c. 560-590 CE who displaced the Calabras from the Pandya's country. Nilakanta Sastri, A History of South India, pp 105-137 Early history Ancient Tamil Nadu contained three monarchical states, headed by kings called Vendar and several tribal chieftaincies, headed by the chiefs called by the general denomination Vel or Valir. Still lower at the local level there were clan chiefs called Kizar or Manar. During the 3rd century BCE, the Deccan was part of the Maurya Empire, and from the middle of the 1st century BCE to 2nd century CE the same area was ruled by the Satavahana dynasty. The Tamil area had an independent existence outside the control of these northern empires. The Tamil kings and chiefs were always in conflict with each other mostly over property. The royal courts were mostly places of social gathering rather than places of dispensation of authority, they were centres for distribution of resources. Tamil literature Tolkapiam shed some light on early religion. Gradually, the rulers came under the influence of Vedic beliefs, which encouraged performance of sacrifices to enhance the status of the ruler. Buddhism, Jainism, and Ahivika co existed with early Shaivite, Vaishnavism, and Shaktism during the first five centuries. The names of the three dynasties, Cholas, Pandyas, and Cheras, are mentioned in the Pillars of Ashoka inscribed 273-232 BCE inscriptions, among the kingdoms, which though not subject to Ashoka, were on friendly terms with him. The king of Kalinga, Karavela, who ruled around 150 BCE, mentioned in the famous Hathagumpha inscription of the confederacy of the Tamil kingdoms that had existed for over 100 years, Karakala Chola was the most famous early Chola. He is mentioned in a number of poems in the Sangam poetry. In later times Karakala was the subject of many legends found in the Salapatikaram and in inscriptions and literary works of the 11th and 12th centuries. They attribute to him the conquest of the whole of India up to the Himalayas and the construction of the flood banks of the river Kaveri with the aid of his feudatories. These legends however are conspicuous by their absence in the Sangam poetry. Kosangandan was another famous early Chola king who has been extolled in a number of poems of the Sangam period. He was even made a Seva saint during the medieval period. Pandyas ruled initially from Korkai, a seaport on the southernmost tip of the Indian peninsula, and in later times moved to Madurai. Pandyas are also mentioned in Sangam literature, as well as by Greek and Roman sources during this period. Megasthenes in his Indica mentions the Pandyan kingdom. The Pandyas controlled the present districts of Madurai, Tirunelveli, and parts of South Kerala. They had trading contacts with Greece and Rome. With the other kingdoms of Tamilakam, they maintained trading contacts and marital relationships with Tamil merchants from Elam. Various Pandya kings find mention in a number of poems in the Sangam literature. Among them Nedanyulian, the victor of Talayulanganam, deserves a special mention. Besides several short poems found in the Akananuru and the Purananuru collections, there are two major works, Matharikansi and the Netunalvatai in the collection of Patapatu that give a glimpse into the society and commercial activities in the Pandyan kingdom during the Sangam age. The early Pandyas went into obscurity at the end of the 3rd century CE during the incursion of the Calabras. 
The Kingdom of the Cheras comprised the modern western Tamil Nadu and Kerala, along the western or Malabar coast of southern India. Their proximity to the sea favoured trade with Africa. Shara rulers dated to the first few centuries AD. It records the names of the kings, the princes, and the court poets who extolled them. The internal chronology of this literature is still far from settled, and at present a connected account of the history of the period cannot be derived. Uthian Cheralathan, Netam Cheralathan and Senguttuvan Shara are some of the rulers referred to in the Sangam poems. Senguttuvan Shara, the most celebrated Shara king, is famous for the legends surrounding Kanagi, the heroine of the Tamil epic Silapathakaram. The people of the regions which constitutes the ancient territories of the Cheras spoke Tamil language and had extensive interaction with the rest of the Tamil country. It was only towards the 9th or the 10th centuries CE, due to Sanskrit influences on Tamil, a new language Malayalam began to evolve in western parts of the territory. These early kingdoms sponsored the growth of some of the oldest extant literature in Tamil. The classical Tamil literature, referred to as Sangam literature, is attributed to the period between 500 BCE and 300 CE. The poems of Sangam literature, which deal with emotional and material topics, were categorized and collected into various anthologies during the medieval period. These Sangam poems paint the picture of a fertile land and of a people who were organized into various occupational groups. The governance of the land was through hereditary monarchies, although the sphere of the state's activities and the extent of the ruler's powers were limited through the adherence to the established order dharma. The people were loyal to their kings and roving bards and musicians and dansus gathered at the royal courts of the generous kings. The arts of music and dancing were highly developed and popular. Musical instruments of various types find mention in the Sangam poems. The amalgamation of the southern and the northern styles of dancing started during this period and is reflected fully in the epic Salapadikaram. Internal and external trade was well organized and active. Evidence from both archaeology and literature speaks of a flourishing foreign trade with the Yavanas Greeks. The port city of Pahar on the east coast and Muziris on the west coast of South India were emporia of foreign trade, where huge ships moored, offloading precious merchandise. This trade started to decline after the 2nd century CE and the direct contact between the Roman Empire and the ancient Tamil country was replaced by trade with the Arabs and the Oxumites of East Africa. Internal trade was also brisk and goods were sold and bartered. Agriculture was the main profession of a vast majority of the populace. Topic: <laughs> Interregnum 300 to 700 After the close of the Sangam era, from about 300 to about 600 CE, there is an almost total lack of information regarding occurrences in the Tamil land. Some time about 300 CE, the whole region was upset by the appearance of the Calabrus. These people are described in later literature as evil rulers who overthrew the established Tamil kings and got a stranglehold of the country. Information about their origin and details about their reign is scarce. They did not leave many artifacts or monuments. The only source of information on them is the scattered mentions in Buddhist and Jain literature. Historians speculate that these people followed Buddhist or Jain faiths and were antagonistic towards the Hindu religions, viz., the Astika schools, adhered by the majority of inhabitants of the Tamil region during the early centuries CE. As a result, Hindu scholars and authors who followed their decline in the 7th and 8th century may have expunged any mention of them in their texts and generally tended to paint their rule in a negative light. It is perhaps due to this reason, the period of their rule is known as a Dark Age, an interregnum. Some of the ruling families migrated northwards and found enclaves for themselves away from the Calabris. Jainism and Buddhism, took deep roots in the society, giving birth to a large body of ethical poetry. Writing became very widespread and Vatilutu evolved from the Tamil Brahmi became a mature script for writing Tamil, while several anthologies were compiled by collecting bardic poems of earlier centuries. Some of the epic poems such as the Salapadikaram and didactic works such as the Tarukural were also written during this period. The patronage of the Jain and Buddhist scholars by the Calabra kings influenced the nature of the literature of the period, and most of the works that can be attributed to this period were written by the Jain and Buddhist authors. In the field of dance and music, the elite started patronizing new polished styles, partly influenced by northern ideas, in the place of the folk styles. A few of the earliest rock-cut temples belong to this period. 
Brick temples known as Kadam, Devakulam, and Pali dedicated to various deities are referred to in literary works. Calibris were displaced around the 7th century by the revival of Pallava and Pandya power. Even with the exit of the Calibris, the Jain and Buddhist influence still remained in Tamil Nadu. The early Pandya and the Pallava kings were followers of these faiths. The Hindu reaction to this apparent decline of their religion was growing and reached its peak during the later part of the 7th century. There was a widespread Hindu revival during which a huge body of Saiva and Vaishnava literature was created. Many Saiva Nainmars and Vaishnava Alvars provided a great stimulus to the growth of popular devotional literature. Karaikal Amayar who lived in the 6th century CE was the earliest of these Nainmars. The celebrated Saiva hymnists Sundaramurti, Tirunyana Sambanthar and Thirunavakarazar were of this period. Vaishnava Alvars such as Poigai Alvar, Boothothalvar and Payalvar produced devotional hymns for their faith and their songs were collected later into the 4,000 poems of Naalayura Divya Prabhandam. <laughs> Age of Empires 600 The medieval period of the history of the Tamil country saw the rise and fall of many kingdoms, some of whom went on to the extent of empires, exerting influences both in India and overseas. The Cholas who were very active during the Sangam age were entirely absent during the first few centuries. The period started with the rivalry between the Pandyas and the Pallavas, which in turn caused the revival of the Cholas. The Cholas went on to becoming a great power. Their decline saw the brief resurgence of the Pandyas. This period was also that of the reinvigorated Hinduism during which temple building and religious literature were at their best. The Hindu sects Savism and Vaishnavism became dominant, replacing the prevalence of Jainism and Buddhism of the previous era. Savism was patronized more by the Chola kings and became more or less a state religion. Some of the earliest temples that are still standing were built during this period by the Pallavas. The rock-cut temples in Mamalapuram and the majestic Kailasanatha and Vaikuntapuramal temples of Kanchipuram stand testament to the Pallava art. The Cholas, utilizing their prodigious wealth earned through their extensive conquests, built long-lasting stone temples including the great Brahadasvara temple of Thanjavur and exquisite bronze sculptures. Temples dedicated to Shiva and Vishnu received liberal donations of money, jewels, animals, and land, and thereby became powerful economic institutions. Tamil script replaced the Vatteluttu script throughout Tamil Nadu for writing Tamil. Religious literature flourished during the period. The Tamil epic, Kamban's Ramavatharam, was written in the 13th century. A contemporary of Kamban was the famous poet Aveyar, who found great happiness in writing for young children. The secular literature was mostly court poetry devoted to the eulogy of the rulers. The religious poems of the previous period and the classical literature of the Sangam period were collected and systematized into several anthologies. Sanskrit was patronized by the priestly groups for religious rituals and other ceremonial purposes. Nambi Andar Nambi, who was a contemporary of Rajaraja Chola I, collected and arranged the books on Savism into eleven books called Tirumurai. The hagiology of Savism was standardized in Pariyapuranam by Sekular, who lived during the reign of Kulathunga Chola II Jayamkandar's Kalingatupurani, a semi-historical account on the two invasions of Kalinga by Kulathunga Chola I was an early example of a biographical work. Pallavas <laughs> <laughs> The 7th century Tamil Nadu saw the rise of the Pallavas under Mahendravarman I and his son Mamala Narasimhavarman I. The Pallavas were not a recognized political power before the 2nd century. It has been widely accepted by scholars that they were originally executive officers under the Satavahana kings. After the fall of the Satavahanas, they began to get control over parts of Andhra and the Tamil country. Later they had marital ties with the Vishnukundina who ruled over the Deccan. It was around 550 CE under King Simhavishnu that the Pallavas emerged into prominence. They subjugated the Cholas and reigned as far south as the Kaveri River. The Pallavas were at their finest during the reigns of Narasimhavarman I and Pallavamala Nandavarman II. Pallavas ruled a large portion of South India with Kanchipuram as their capital. Dravidian architecture during the Pallava rule includes the Shore Temple, built for Narasimhavarman II, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. 
Many sources describe Bodhidharma, the founder of the Zen school of Buddhism in China, as a prince of the Pallava dynasty. During the 6th and the 7th centuries, the Western Deccan saw the rise of the Chalukyas based in Vatapi. Palakeshin II invaded the Pallava kingdom in the reign of Mahendravarman I Narasimhavarman, who succeeded Mahendravarman, mounted a counter invasion of the Chalukya country and captured the Chalukyan capital Vatapi and ruled it for twelve years. The rivalry between the Chalukyas and the Pallavas continued for another 100 years until the demise of the Chalukyas around 750. The Chalukyas and Pallavas fought numerous battles and the Pallava capital Kanchipuram was occupied by Vikramaditya II during the reign of Nandivarman II. Nandivarman II had a very long reign 732 He led an expedition to the Ganga Kingdom South Mysore in 760. Pallavas were also in constant conflict with the Pandyas and their frontier shifted along the river Kaveri. The Pallavas had the more difficult existence of the two as they had to fight on two fronts against the Pandyas as well as the Chalukyas. Topic: <laughs> Pandyas. Pandya Kadungan 560 to 590 is credited with the overthrow of the Calabras in the south. Kadungan and his son Maravarman of Venasulamani revived the Pandya power. Pandya Sendan extended their rule to the Shara country. His son Arakesari Parantaka Maravarman c. had a long and prosperous rule. He fought many battles and extended the Pandya power. Pandya was well known since ancient times, with contacts, even diplomatic, reaching the Roman Empire. During the 13th century, Marco Polo mentioned it as the richest empire in existence. The Pandyan Empire was large enough to pose a serious threat to the Pallava power. Pandya Maravarman Rajasimha aligned with the Chalukya Vikramaditya II and attacked the Pallava king Nandivarman II. Varagunan I defeated the Pallavas in a battle on the banks of the Kaveri. The Pallava king Nandivarman sought to restrain the growing power of the Pandyas and went into an alliance with the feudal chieftains of Kongu and Shara countries. The armies met in several battles and the Pandya forces scored decisive victories in them. Pandyas under Srimara Srivalaba also invaded Sri Lanka and devastated the northern provinces in 840. The Pandya power continued to grow under Srimara and encroached further into the Pallava territories. The Pallavas were now facing a new threat in the form of the Rashtrakutas who had replaced the Chalukyas in the western Deccan. However the Pallavas found an able monarch in Nandivarman III, who with the help of his Ganga and Chola allies defeated Srimara at the Battle of Teleru. The Pallava kingdom again extended up to the river Vagai. The Pandyas suffered further defeats in the hands of the Pallava Enraipatunga at Arasal c. 848. From then the Pandyas had to accept the overlordship of the Pallavas. Cholas Around 850, out of obscurity rose Vijayalaya, made use of an opportunity arising out of a conflict between Pandyas and Pallavas, captured Thanjavur from Muthurayar dynasty and eventually established the imperial line of the medieval Cholas. Vijayalaya revived the Chola dynasty and his son Aditya I helped establish their independence. He invaded Pallava kingdom in 903 and killed the Pallava king Aparahita in battle, ending the Pallava reign. The Chola kingdom under Parantaka I expanded to cover the entire Pandya country. However towards the end of his reign he suffered several reverses by the Rashtrakutas who had extended their territories well into the Chola kingdom. The Cholas went into a temporary decline during the next few years due to weak kings, palace intrigues and succession disputes. Despite a number of attempts the Pandya country could not be completely subdued and the Rashtrakutas were still a powerful enemy in the north. However, the Chola revival began with the accession of Rajaraja Chola I in 985. Cholas rose as a notable military, economic and cultural power in Asia under Rajaraja and his son Rajendra Chola I. The Chola territories stretched from the islands of Maldives in the south to as far north as the banks of the river Ganges in Bengal. Rajaraja Chola conquered peninsular South India, annexed parts of Sri Lanka and occupied the islands of Maldives. Rajendra Chola extended the Chola conquests to the Malayan archipelago by defeating the Srivijaya kingdom. 
He defeated Mahipala, the king of Bihar and Bengal, and to commemorate his victory he built a new capital called Gangaikonda Cholapuram the town of Cholas who conquered the Ganges. At its peak the Chola Empire extended from the island of Sri Lanka in the south to the Godavari Basin in the north. The kingdoms along the east coast of India up to the river Ganges acknowledged Chola suzerainty. Chola navies invaded and conquered Srivijaya in the Malayan archipelago. Chola armies exacted tribute from Thailand and the Khmer Kingdom of Cambodia. During the reign of Rajaraja and Rajendra, the administration of the Chola Empire matured considerably. The empire was divided into a number of self-governing local government units, and the officials were selected through a system of popular elections. Throughout this period, the Cholas were constantly troubled by the ever resilient Sinhalas trying to overthrow the Chola occupation of Lanka, Pandya princes trying to win independence for their traditional territories, and by the growing ambitions of the Chalukyas in the western Deccan. The history of this period was one of constant warfare between the Cholas and of these antagonists. A balance of power existed between the Chalukyas and the Cholas, and there was a tacit acceptance of the Tungabhadra River as the boundary between the two empires. However, the bone of contention between these two powers was the growing Chola influence in the Vengi kingdom. The Cholas and Chalukyas fought many battles and both kingdoms were exhausted by the endless battles and a stalemate existed. Marital and political alliances between the eastern Chalukya kings based around Vengi located on the south banks of the river Godavari began during the reign of Rajaraja following his invasion of Vengi. Virarajendra Chola's son Athirajendra Chola was assassinated in a civil disturbance in 1070 and Kulathunga Chola I ascended the Chola throne starting the Chalukya Chola dynasty. Kulathunga was a son of the Vengi king Rajaraja Narendra. The Chalukya Chola dynasty saw very capable rulers in Kulathunga Chola I and Vikrama Chola, however the eventual decline of the Chola power practically started during this period. The Cholas lost control of the island of Lanka and were driven out by the revival of Sinhala power. Around 1118 they also lost the control of Vengi to western Chalukya king Vikramaditya VI and Gangavadi southern Mysore districts to the growing power of Hoysala Vishnuvardhana, a Chalukya feudatory. In the Pandya territories, the lack of a controlling central administration caused a number of claimants to the Pandya throne to cause a civil war in which the Sinhalas and the Cholas were involved by proxy. During the last century of the Chola existence, a permanent Hoysala army was stationed in Kanchipuram to protect them from the growing influence of the Pandyas. Rajendra Chola III was the last Chola king. The Kadava chieftain Kaparunchinga I even captured Rajendra and held him prisoner. At the close of Rajendra's reign 1279, the Pandyan Empire was at the height of prosperity and had completely absorbed the Chola kingdom. The Cholas also found a place in very famous novel by Kalki title Paniyan Selvan which portrays the whole Chola history with Rajaraja Cholan Paniyan Selvan, Arul Mazi Varman, Vallavarayan Vanthiyathevan, Karikalar, Nandini, Kundavi as the characters of the novel. Cheras <laughs> <laughs> The Cheras were an ancient Dravidian royal dynasty of Tamil origin who ruled in regions of Tamil Nadu and Kerala in India, together with the Chola and the Pandyas. It formed the three principal warring Iron Age kingdoms of southern India in the early centuries of the Common Era, over a wide area comprising Vinad, Kutanad, Kadanad, Pajanad, and more. In other words, they governed the area between Alapuja in the south to Kasargod in the north. This included Palghat, Coimbatore, Salem, and Kalamalai. The capital was Vanshi, which the Romans who actively traded with the Cheras knew as Musras. By the early centuries of the Common Era, civil society and statehood under the Cheras were developed in present-day western Tamil Nadu. The location of the Chera capital is generally assumed to be at modern Karur identified with the Korora of Ptolemy. The Shara kingdom later extended to the plains of Kerala, the Palghat Gap, along the river Purr and occupied land between the river Purr and river Periyar, creating two harbour towns, Tandi and Musiri where the Roman trade settlements flourished. The Cheras were in continuous conflict with the neighbouring Cholas and Pandyas. The Cheras are said to have defeated the combined armies of the Pandyas and the Cholas and their ally states. They also made battles with the Kadambas of Banavasi and the Yavanas the Greeks on the Indian coast. After the 2nd century AD, the Cheras' power decayed rapidly with the decline of the lucrative trade with the Romans. 
The Tamil poetic collection called Sangam literature describes a long line of Shara rulers dated to the first few centuries AD. It records the names of the kings, the princes, and the court poets who extolled them. The internal chronology of this literature is still far from settled, and at present a connected account of the history of the period cannot be derived. Uthian Cheralathan, Netam Cheralathan and Senguttuvan Shara are some of the rulers referred to in the Sangam poems. Senguttuvan Shara, the most celebrated Shara king, is famous for the legend surrounding Kanagi, the heroine of the Tamil epic Silapathakaram. The Shara kingdom owed its importance to trade with West Asia, Greece and Rome. Its geographical advantages, like the abundance of exotic spices, the navigability of the rivers connecting the Ghat Mountains with the Arabian Sea, and the discovery of favourable monsoon winds which carried sailing ships directly from the Arabian coast to Shara Kingdom, combined to produce a veritable boom in the Shara foreign trade. The later Cheras ruled from the 9th century. Little is known about the Cheras between the two dynasties. The second dynasty, Kalasakaras ruled from a city on the banks of River Periyar called Mahodayapuram Kodungalar. Though never regained the old status in the peninsula, Kalasakaras fought numerous wars with their powerful neighbours and diminished to history in the 12th century as a result of continuous Chola and Rashtrakuta invasions. The Shara dynasty was supported by Tamil warriors such as Villavar, Vanavar, and Malayar clans. The Shara rulers of Vanadu, based at the port Keelan in southern Kerala, trace their relations back to the later Prasekan Cheras. Ravi Varma Kalasakara, ruler of Vanadu from 1299 to 1314, is known for his ambitious military campaigns to former Pandya and Chola territories. Pandya revival After being overshadowed by the Pallavas and Cholas for centuries, the Pandyas revived their fortunes in the 13th century and the Pandya power extended from the Telugu territories along the banks of the Godavari River to the northern half of Sri Lanka. When Kalasakara Pandyanai died in 1308, a conflict stemming from succession disputes arose amongst his sons, the legitimate Sundara Pandya and the illegitimate Veera Pandya who was favoured by the king fought each other for the throne. Soon Madurai fell into the hands of the invading armies of the Delhi Sultanate which initially gave protection to the vanquished Sundara Pandyan. <laughs> Delhi Sultanate. Malik Kafir, a general of the Delhi Sultan Aladdin Khalji invaded and sacked Madurai in 1311. Pandyas and their descendants were confined to a small region around Tirunelveli for a few more years. Revivarman Kalasakara R. 1299 a Shara feudatory of Kalasakara Pandya, staked his claim to the Pandya throne. Revivarman, utilizing the unsettled nature of the country, quickly overran the southern Tamil Nadu and brought the entire region from Kanyakumari to Kanchipuram, under the Shara Kingdom. His inscription was found in Punaamali, a suburb of Madras. But, Revivarman's hold over Kanchi was only short-lived and his aggressive activities were arrested by the Kakatiya ruler, Prataparudra II. The Kakatiya army under the command of Muppidi Nayaka marched to Kanchi, and captured the city. Martial arts history of Tamil Nadu Martial arts were compulsory for male children from the age of 5 to 7, as their duty was to preserve their mother land. Some of the martial arts practiced by the ancient Tamil people are Traditional gymnastic exercises Burning torch games Kutu Varasai Salambam Vaazh Vichu, sword fight Archery Deer horn fight Spring sword fight Valari, traditional South Indian boomerang Thijiri, traditional South Indian chakra yudam Adi Murai, today commonly known as Southern Kalari or the Khan Kalari Malutham, traditional wrestling Gusthi, traditional boxing Uramurama Ruthal Varma Kalai, the art of vital points. Topic: <inaudible> Vijayanagar and Nayak period, 1300 to 1650. The 14th century invasion by the Delhi sultans caused a retaliatory reaction from the Hindus, who rallied to build a new kingdom called the Vijayanagara Empire. 
Bukka, with his brother Harihara founded the Hindu Vijayanagara Empire based in the city of Vijayanagara in Karnataka. Under Bukka the empire prospered and continued to expand towards the south. Bukka and his son Kampana conquered most of the kingdoms of southern India. In 1371 the Vijayanagar Empire defeated the short-lived Madurai Sultanate, which had been established by the remnants of the invading Khalji army. Eventually the empire covered the entire South India. Vijayangara Empire established local governors called Nayaks to rule in the various territories of the empire. The Vijayanagar Empire declined in 1564 defeated by the Deccan Sultans in the Battle of Talakota. The local Nayak governors declared their independence and started their rule. The Nayaks of Madurai and Thanjavur were the most prominent of them. Ragunatha Nayak was the greatest of the Thanjavur Nayaks. Ragunatha Nayak encouraged trade and permitted a Danish settlement in 1620 at Tarangambadi. This laid the foundation of future European involvement in the affairs of the country. The success of the Dutch inspired the English to seek trade with Thanjavur, which was to lead to far-reaching repercussions. Vijaya Rigava was the last of the Thanjavur Nayaks. Nayaks reconstructed some of the oldest temples in the country and their contributions can be seen even today. Nayaks expanded the existing temples with large pillared halls, and tall gateway towers, which is representative of the religious architecture of this period. In Madurai, Tirumalai Nayak was the most famous Nayak ruler. He patronized art and architecture creating new structures and expanding the existing landmarks in and around Madurai. On Tirumalai Nayak's death in 1659, the Madurai Nayak kingdom began to break up. His successors were weak rulers and invasions of Madurai recommenced. <laughs> Maratha influence Shivaji Bansal, the great Maratha ruler, invaded the south, as did Chika Deva Raya of Mysore and other Muslim rulers, resulting in chaos and instability. Rani Mangamal, the Nayak ruler of Madurai, resisted these invasions showing great courage. Shivaji had conquered important forts like Jinji and Velour by 1678. On the other hand, Ekoji, half-brother of Shivaji had established his own rule in Thanjavur. Jinji served as the Maratha capital for nine years during the 27-year Mughal-Maratha War. The Mughals captured Jinji in 1698. <laughs> rule of Polygars, Nizams and Nawabs European settlements began to appear in the Tamil country during the Vijayanagara Empire. In 1605, the Dutch established trading posts in the Karamandal coast near Jinji and in Pulikat. The British East India Company built a factory warehouse at Armageyan a village around 35 miles 56 km north of Pulikat, as the site in 1626. In 1639, Francis Day, one of the officers of the company, secured the rights over a three-mile long strip of land a fishing village called Madraspatnam from the Damarla Venkatadri Nayakudu, the Nayak of Andavasi. The East India Company built Fort St. George and Castle on an approximate five-square-kilometre sand strip. This was the start of the town of Madras. The Karamandal coast was ruled by the Vijayanagara king Aravidu dynasty, Peta Venkata Raya, based in Chandragiri and Velour Fort. With his approval the English began to exercise sovereign rights over their strip of land, during the Maratha rule of Thanjavur. After Ekoji, his three sons namely Shahji, Sirfoji I, Thukoji alias Thulaya I ruled Thanjavur. The greatest of the Maratha rulers was Sirfoji II Sirfoji devoted his life to the pursuit of culture and Thanjavur became renowned as a seat of learning. Sirfoji's patronized art and literature and built the Saraswati Mahal library at his palace. The incursion of the Muslim armies from the north forced a southward migration of Hindus from the central Deccan and the Andhra countries to seek shelter under the Nayak and the Maratha kings. The famous Carnatic music composer Tyagaraja (1767–1847), along with the Trinity of Carnatic music, flourished in the Thanjavur district during this time. With the demise of the Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb in 1707, his empire dissolved amidst numerous succession wars, and the vassals of the empire began to assert their independence. 
The administration of the southern districts of Tamil Nadu was fragmented with hundreds of polygars or palayakarars governing a few villages each. These local chieftains often fought amongst each other over territory. This turned the political situation in the Tamil country and in South India in general into confusion and chaos. The European traders found themselves in a situation where they could exploit the prevailing confusion to their own advantage. Topic: <laughs> European colonization 1750 1858. Topic: <laughs> Anglo-French conflicts. The French were relative newcomers to India. The French East India Company was formed in 1664 and in 1666 the French representatives obtained Aurangzeb's permission to trade in India. The French soon set up trading posts at Pondicherry on the Karamandal coast. They occupied Karakal in 1739 and Joseph François Duplex was appointed governor of Pondicherry. In Europe the War of the Austrian Succession began in 1740 and eventually the British and the French forces in India were caught up in the conflict. There were numerous naval battles between the two navies along the Coromandel coast. The French led by La Bourdonnais attacked the poorly defended Fort St. George in Madras in 1746 and occupied it. Robert Clive was one of the prisoners of war from this battle. The war in Europe ended in 1748 and with the Peace of Aix la Chapelle, Madras was restored to the British. The conflict between the British and the French continued, this time in political rather than military terms. Both the Nawab of the Carnatic and Nizam of Hyderabad positions were taken by rulers who were strongly sympathetic to the French. Chanda Sahib had been made Nawab of the Carnatic with Duplex's assistance, while the British had taken up the cause of the previous incumbent, Muhammad Ali Khan Walajah. In the resultant battle between the rivals, Clive assisted Muhammad Ali by attacking Chanda Sahib's fort in Arcot and took possession of it in 1751. The French assisted Chanda Sahib in his attempts to drive Clive out of Arcot. However the large Arcot army assisted by the French was defeated by the British. The Treaty of Paris 1763 formally confirmed Muhammad Ali as the Nawab of the Carnatic. It was a result of this action and the increased British influence that in 1765 the Emperor of Delhi issued a Furman decree recognizing the British possessions in southern India. <inaudible> <inaudible> British government control Although the company was becoming increasingly bold and ambitious in putting down resisting states, it was getting clearer day by day that the company was incapable of governing the vast expanse of the captured territories. Opinion amongst the members of the British Parliament urged the government to control the activities of the company. The company's financial position was also bad and it had to apply for a loan from Parliament. Seizing this opportunity, the Parliament passed the Regulating Act also known as East India Company Act in 1773. The Act set down regulations to control the company board and created the position of the Governor-General. Warren Hastings was appointed the first Governor-General. In 1784 Pitt's India Act made the company subordinate to the British government. The next few decades were of rapid growth and expansion in the territories controlled by the British. The Anglo-Mysore Wars of 1766–1799 and the Anglo-Maratha Wars of 1772–1818 put the company in control of most of India. In a sign of the early resistance against the English control, the Palayakara chieftains of the old Madurai Kingdom, who had independent authority over their territories, ran into a conflict with the company officials over tax collection. Katabaman, a local Palayakara chieftain in the Tirunelveli district, rebelled against the taxes imposed by the company administration in the 1790s. After the First Polygar War (1799–1802), he was captured and hanged in 1799. A year later, the Second Polygar War was fought by Umatharai was involved in the Polygar Wars against the East India Company. In the First Polygar War, he was captured and imprisoned in Palayamkatai prison. In February 1801, he escaped from Palayamkottai and rebuilt the Panchalankarichi fort which had been raised in the First War. In the Second Palagar War that followed, Umatharai allied himself with Maruthu brothers who ruled Sivagangai and was part of a grand alliance against the company which included Diran Chinnamalai and Kerala Verma. 
The company forces led by Lieutenant Colonel Agnew laid siege to the Panchalankarichi fort and captured it in May 1801 after a prolonged siege and artillery bombardment. Umetharai escaped the fall of the fort and joined Marudu brothers at their jungle fort at Kalayar Koval. The company forces pursued him there and eventually captured Kalayar Koval in October 1801. Umetharai along with the Marudu brothers was hanged on 16 November 1801. In 1798 Lord Wellesley became the Governor-General. In the course of the next six years Wellesley made vast conquests and doubled the company's territory. He shut out the French from further acquisitions in India, destroyed several ruling powers in the Deccan and the Carnatic, took the Mughal Emperor under the company's protection and compelled Sirfoji, the King of Thanjavur to cede control of his kingdom. The Madras Presidency was established so that the territory under direct company control could be administered effectively. The direct administration began to cause resentment among the people. In 1806 the soldiers of the Velour Cantonment rebelled when William Bentinck, the governor of Madras decreed that the native soldiers should abandon all caste marks. Fearing this act to be an attempt of forceful conversion to Christianity, the soldiers mutinied. The rebellion was suppressed but 114 British officers were killed and several hundred mutineers executed. Bentinck was recalled in disgrace. End of company rule The simmering discontent in the various districts of the company territories exploded in 1857 into the Sepoy War. Although the rebellion had a huge impact on the state of the colonial power in India, Tamil Nadu was mostly unaffected by it. In consequence of the war, the British government enacted the Act of 1858 to abolish the powers of the company and transfer the government to the Crown. British rule In 1858 the British Crown assumed direct rule in India. During the early years the government was autocratic in many ways. The opinion of Indians in their own affairs was not considered by Britain as important. However, in due course the British Raj began to allow Indians participation in local government. Viceroy Ripon passed a resolution in 1882, which gave a greater and more real share in local government to the people. Further legislation such as the 1892 Indian Councils Act and the 1909 Minto Morley reforms eventually led to the establishment of the Madras Legislative Council. The non-cooperation movement started under Mahatma Gandhi's leadership led the British government to pass the Government of India Act also known as Montague Kelmsford Reforms of 1919. First elections were held for the local assemblies in 1921. Failure of the summer monsoons and administrative shortcomings of the Ryotwari system resulted in a severe famine in the Madras Presidency during 1876–1877. The government and several charitable institutions organised relief work in the city and the suburbs. Funds were also raised from Europeans in India and overseas for the famine relief. Humanitarians such as William Digby wrote angrily about the woeful failure of the British administration to act promptly and adequately in response to the wholesale suffering caused by the famine. When the famine finally ended with the return of the monsoon in 1878, between three and five million people had perished. In response to the devastating effects of the famine, the government organised a famine commission in 1880 to define the principles of disaster relief. The government also instituted a famine insurance grant, setting aside 1.5 million rupees. Other civic works such as canal building and improvements in roads and railway were also undertaken to minimize effects of any future famines. <laughs> <laughs> Independence struggle The growing desire for independence began to gradually gather pace in the country and its influence in Tamil Nadu generated a number of volunteers to the fight against the British colonial power in the struggle for independence. Notable amongst these are Tirupur Kumaran, who was born in 1904 in a small village near Erod. Kumaran lost his life during a protest march against the British. The location of the French colony of Pondicherry, offered a place of refuge for the fugitives freedom fighters trying to flee the British police. Aurobindo was one such living in Pondicherry in 1910. The poet Subramanya Bharati was a contemporary of Aurobindo. 
Bharati wrote numerous poems in Tamil extolling the revolutionary cause. He also published the journal India from Pondicherry. Both Aurobindo and Bharati were associated with other Tamil revolutionaries such as VVS. Iyar and V. O. Chidambaram Pillai. Tamils formed a significant percentage of the members of the Indian National Army founded by Subhas Chandra Bose to fight the British occupation in India. Lakshmi Sagal from Tamil Nadu was a prominent leader in the Aina's Rani of Jhansi Regiment. In 1916 Dr. T. M. Nair and Rao Bahadur Thigaraya Chetty released the non-Brahmin manifesto sowing the seeds for the Dravidian movements. During the 1920s, two movements focused mainly on regional politics began in Tamil Nadu. One was the Justice Party, which won the local legislative elections held in 1921. The Justice Party was not focused on the Indian independence movement, rather on the local issues such as affirmative action for socially backward groups. The other main movement was the anti-religious, anti-Brahimin reformist movement led by E.V. Ramasamy Nikar. Further steps towards eventual self-rule were taken in 1935 when the British government passed the All India Federation Act of 1935. Fresh local elections were held and in Tamil Nadu the Congress Party captured power defeating the Justice Party. In 1938, Ramasamy Nikar with C. N. Anadurai launched an agitation against the Congress Ministry's decision to introduce the teaching of Hindi in schools. Post-independence period The trauma of the partition did not impact Tamil Nadu when India was granted independence in 1947. There was no sectarian violence against various religions. There had always been an atmosphere of mutual respect and peaceful coexistence between all religions in Tamil Nadu. Congress formed the first ministry in the Madras Presidency. C. Rajagopalachari Rajaji was the first chief minister. Madras Presidency was eventually reconstituted as Madras State. Following agitations for a separate Andhra state comprising the Telugu-speaking regions of the Madras state by Padi Sriramalu, the Indian government decided to partition the Madras state. In 1953 Rayalasima and the coastal Andhra regions became the new state of Andhra Pradesh and the Bellary district became part of the Mysore state. In 1956 South Kanara district was transferred to Mysore, the Malabar coastal districts became part of the new state of Kerala, and the Madras state assumed its present shape. The Madras state was named Tamil Nadu literally the land of Tamils or Tamil country in 1969, the Sri Lankan civil war during the 1970s and the 80s saw large numbers of Sri Lankan Tamils fleeing to Tamil Nadu. The plight of Tamil refugees caused a surge of support from most of the Tamil political parties. They exerted pressure on the Indian government to intercede with the Sri Lankan government on behalf of the Sri Lankan Tamilians. However, LTTE lost much of its support from Tamil Nadu following the assassination of Rajiv Gandhi on 21 May 1991 by an operative from Sri Lanka for the former Prime Minister's role in sending Indian peacekeepers to Sri Lanka to disarm the LTTE. The east coast of Tamil Nadu was one of the areas affected by the Indian Ocean earthquake of 2004, during which almost 8,000 people died in the disaster. The sixth most populous state in the Indian Union, Tamil Nadu was the seventh largest economy in 2005 among the states of India. The growing demands for skilled labour has caused increased number of educational institutions in Tamil Nadu. The widespread application of caste-based affirmative action caused the state to have 69% of all educational and employment vacancies to be reserved to the backward castes. Such caste-based reservations have huge public support in Tamil Nadu, with no popular protests organized against its implementation. Evolution of regional politics The politics of Tamil Nadu have gone through three distinct phases since independence. The domination of the Congress Party after 1947 gave way to the Dravidian populist mobilization in the 1960s. This phase lasted until towards the end of the 1990s. The most recent phase saw the fragmentation of the Dravidian political parties and led to the advent of political alliances and coalition governments. Anadurai formed the Dravida Munnetra Kazhagam in 1949 after splitting from Dravidar Kazhagam. 
DMK also decided to oppose the expansion of the Hindi culture in Tamil Nadu and started the demand for a separate homeland for the Dravidians in the south. The demand was for an independent state called Dravida Nadu country of Dravidians comprising Tamil Nadu and parts of Andhra, Karnataka and Kerala. The increased involvement of the Indian National Congress Party in Madras during the late 1950s and the strong pan-Indian emotions whipped up by the Chinese invasion of India in 1962 led to the demand for Dravida Nadu losing some of its immediacy. Consequently, in 1963, when the 16th Amendment to the Constitution of India, precluded secessionist parties from contesting elections, the DMK chose to formally drop its demand for an independent Dravida Nadu, focusing instead on securing greater functional autonomy within the framework of the Indian Constitution. The Congress Party, riding on the wave of public support stemming from the independence struggle, formed the first post-independence government in Tamil Nadu and continued to govern until 1967. In 1965 and 1968, DMK led widespread anti-Hindi agitations in the state against the plans of the Union government to introduce Hindi in the state schools. Affirmative action in employment and educational institutions were pioneered in Tamil Nadu based on the demands of the Dravidian movement. The leadership of the Dravidian movement had very capable authors and literati in Anadurai and Karanadi, who assiduously utilized the popular media of stage plays and movies to spread its political messages. M. G. Ramachandran MGR, who later became the chief minister of Tamil Nadu, was one such stage and movie actor. In 1967 DMK won the state election. DMK split into two in 1971, with MGR forming the splinter All India Anna Dravida Munnetra Kazhagam AIADMK. Since then these two parties have dominated the politics of Tamil Nadu. AIADMK, under MGR retained control of the state government over three consecutive assembly elections in 1977, 1980 and 1984. After MGR's death AIADMK was split over the succession between various contenders. Eventually J. Jayalalitha took over the leadership of AIADMK. Several changes to the political balance in Tamil Nadu took place during the later half of the 1990s, eventually leading to the end of the duopoly of DMK and AIADMK in the politics of Tamil Nadu. In 1996, a split in the Congress party in Tamil Nadu eventuated in the formation of Tamil Manila Congress TMC. TMC aligned with the DMK, while another party Marumalarchi Dravida Munnetra Kazhagam MDMK, which split from DMK aligned with the AIADMK. These and several smaller political parties began to gain popular support. The first instance of a «grand alliance» was during the 1996 elections for the national parliament, during which the AIADMK formed a large coalition of a number of smaller parties to counter the electoral threat posed by the alliance between the DMK and TMC. Since then the formation of alliances of large number of political parties has become an electoral practice in Tamil Nadu. The electoral decline of Congress party at the national level, which started during the early 1990, forced the Congress to seek coalition partners from various states including Tamil Nadu. This paved the way for the Dravidian parties to be part of the central government. See also Political history of medieval Karnataka Tamil Heritage Foundation Chronology of Tamil History Notes <laughs>